Hey everybody, how you doing today? Mark here. Welcome to my kitchen. And yes, we're going to make dinner yet again tonight. And tonight what we're going to have is apple ham sticks. I got everything on the counter and I'll show you exactly what to do. Let's go. Okay, everybody, you know, I just want to take a moment and tell you a little something personal before we start cooking. And it might seem a little disgusting for a food video, but I just found out and I want to share this with you and also put it out there that I am in my 50s and it is that time of my life where I have to start worrying about colon cancers and prostate cancers, you know, stuff like that. So I have actually gone and seen my doctor. She prescribed a Cologuard for me. I got the package in the mail, got the sample, sent it away, and I just got word today that my sample was negative. So I'm happy about that. So that's one less thing off my shoulders, okay? And if you're in the age of around your 50s, mid 50s, you know, please do this okay it is a huge killer of people these colon cancers and stuff please get yourself checked out now being that i just did mine it was no hassle whatsoever you don't have to go for the colonoscopy and stuff like that ask your doctor for a cologuard it's really simple to do they give you great instructions everything is um already pre paid for all the postage and stuff like that so basically all you got to do is get your package collect your sample package it all back up the um, shipping label is already on the box all you got to do is take it to a ups um, facility pickup location um, mine was just down at the cvs down the street so i didn't have to <laughs> i didn't have to take it to a hospital or something like that you know you just go into the cvs and say here can you mail that for me and they're like yep sure so please get yourself checked, okay? That's it, that's all my service message was, is just get yourself checked out for colon cancer. All right, let's start cooking. Okay, so yes, this is a ham steak. It is not a full ham. It is just about a half inch off of a ham. This weighs roughly one and three quarter pounds. Really nice cut of meat. And being that it's just me and the girls eating, Jen's not eating with us, I don't have to worry about the sodium in the ham. So, yeah. Um, this is, however, can be converted to a diabetic recipe, and I'll show you why in a minute. But it is not a low sodium recipe, okay? Ham has a lot of salt. All right, next thing I have is apple juice. Now you can also use apple cider if you want, and actually I would prefer it with apple cider. I just didn't have any on hand, but I did have some concentrate apple juice. So I just mixed that up. We'll need two cups of apple juice or apple cider. Here we have brown sugar. Now this is where you can make it diabetic friendly. Use a sugar substitute, a brown sugar substitute, and we'll need two tablespoons of that and that's what you would do to make it diabetic friendly we will need about a half teaspoon of ground mustard and just a pinch of clove that's all we need okay so the first thing i'm going to do is measure out two cups of the apple juice or apple cider if you prefer there's one and there's two the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut open the package, drain out the liquid that's in here, and then I'm going to cut up the ham a little bit, maybe in like four to six pieces. Cut open the package just a little bit. I don't want to open up too much. Just, just try to bring out a lot of that liquid. There's not a whole lot in this one, so that's good. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just Cut it up just a little bit, okay? So there's a little bone right here. And I'm gonna kinda cut around that just a little bit. 
follow this seam right here. There. So there's one piece. There we go. <laughs> so there's one little piece right there. We're just going to put that in the slow cooker. Now these right here are getting, these get kind of tough. So I'm going to cut that off. And then let's see, here's another seam I'm going to follow. So there's another piece of ham I can put in the slow cooker. Now, this is a pretty good size glob of fat right here, but there's meat here. So I'm not going to cut away that right there. I'm just going to leave it all together and I'm just going to basically cut this in half. And I can do a little bit of a trim job here too, get off a little bit of this extra fat. Do it on this piece. And there we go. All right, and then these can go in the slow cooker as well. Okay, so now all I got to do is slap a lid on it and turn it on low. Okay, that's all we need to do right now. The um, brown sugar, the dry mustard, and the clove will be for the second step of the cooking process, okay? So, for maybe five hours on the crock pot, just low setting, just heating it up slowly, okay? And then we'll finish it off on the stove. Yeah, we're going to make a little sauce glaze and everything. It's going to be, trust me, it's going to be good. It'll be good. It'll be good. So I wanted you guys to know that, yes, I am a trained chef. I do have a culinary degree. I went to school for two years and I worked in the industry for a number of years. So yes, I am technically really a chef, okay? It's not just a title on my channel. But I wanted to make it clear that the food I make is not going to be the high-end gourmet stuff that you see a lot of other people do. I've seen channels where... They buy like the most expensive cuts of meat that you'll ever see. Um, I saw a person, they spent like $300 on a beef brisket. I, I'm not doing that, okay? I can't afford to do stuff like that. And to me, that just takes it out of the realm of possibility for so many people. The food I make on my channel is just good, wholesome, down-home cooking meal, okay? Yes, I use a couple of cheats to round off a meal. I'll use, well, like, I'm going to make this with my dinner tonight, okay? It's a uh, pearled couscous, roasted garlic, and olive oil. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to saute off some vegetables. A lot of times I'll just throw this in the microwave, a little salt, pepper, a little butter, and you're ready to go, okay? I want you guys to know that I do have the culinary degree. I do have the head knowledge and skill knowledge to do gourmet food. But I like to keep all my stuff throughout my whole channel within reason for anybody to do, okay? You don't need to go out and buy that three, four, five hundred dollar brisket or Wagyu beef or anything like that to make my to make the stuff on my channel. Okay. Everything should be able to be gotten from your local grocery store. You don't have to order anything. You don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a recipe. This is real simple stuff. And that's the way I want to reach out to you. It was amazing to me when I was still in the culinary world and still cooking my kids would have friends coming over saying that their parents don't cook. So the kids never learn to cook, okay? I'm trying to keep my recipes fairly basic so anybody can do it. You don't need to make it as fast as I do. You don't need to have all the skills that I do, but I'm hoping that you'll learn a few things. You know, the difference is between a, a chop and a dice and a mince, okay? That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to sit there and tell you you need to julienne this and you need to do this other type of... I'm not going to say that kind of stuff. I'm not going to get that technical with you guys, all right? So if you ever see me talking about ways to cut stuff or ways to measure stuff, it should just be common knowledge stuff and just common wording for you guys so you guys can understand and follow along, okay? Thanks. <laughs> 
Missy's down there flopping around on the floor. She wants in here so bad. <laughs> and actually, we got a new gate. You guys want to see the gate that we got? Yeah, that's the new gate that we got right here. It's more of a mesh instead of a, uh, a door or anything like that. And it uh, actually retracts. So it'll actually go over this way and open up. But <laughs> she wants in here so bad. <laughs> She is definitely my dog, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, everybody, it is time to finish off this ham. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ham, we're gonna put it on this foil lined baking pan right here. We're gonna take the brown sugar, the mustard, the clove, we're gonna make a little bit of a paste, okay? We'll use a little bit of the um, apple sauce or apple juice in the pot or maybe um, the cider if you used apple cider just a little bit of that just to make a little bit of a paste that we're going to paint onto the uh onto the ham pieces and then we're going to put it in a 350 degree oven for probably about 20 minutes just so it really kind of solidifies and and makes almost like a crust on that ham okay so let's get into it this is going to be really good okay so the first thing i need to do is get that to 350 degrees so it's preheating now Sorry guys, I forgot to hit the record button again. So what I have in this dish right now is a quarter cup of the apple slash ham juice that's in here. I've already put one tablespoon of brown sugar in there and I'm gonna put a second tablespoon in there. Then I got my dry mustard here and I am going to use a half a teaspoon of dry mustard. And then I just want literally a pinch Literally just a pinch of clove, just bloop. That's all I need. This stuff is very powerful. Do not overuse it. This is just a basting brush. I'm just gonna use that to make up my little, I don't know, what do you wanna call this, baste? And literally just glop it on Nice and heavy. Yeah, I'm just gonna pour the rest on just like that. Boom. All right, now we're gonna put this in the oven and uh, let that really caramelize and just leave a nice glaze all over that ham. All right, into the oven it goes. I'm only going to do about 20 minutes. Timer, 20 minutes. All right, so I'm just looking at the uh, box of this uh, pearled couscous, and I'm just going to use what the directions say. So I've got myself my larger Michelangelo sauce pot here. Put it there. It says I need a cup and three quarters of water so there's the one cup and there's the three quarters and uh, it also says to put about a tablespoon of olive oil into the pan as well I'm not gonna measure out the full tablespoon. I'm just gonna say, yep, that's about a tablespoon. Gonna put it on an eight. Now there is a seasoning packet in here, so I'm gonna take that out, set it aside, dump in the pearls. I always try to figure out where I'm gonna be cooking, so I don't wanna put this right next to a burner. I don't wanna catch it on fire, you know what I mean? Okay, so give that a little bit of a stir. And let's see. It says to bring to a boil, reduce the heat to medium, and let it simmer for eight minutes. And then uh, we will add the spice packet and uh, bring that back to a simmer for another four to six. So leave it all uncovered too. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so my daughter came home from work and she wanted me to add a little extra broccoli to my veggie mix here. And I said, okay, whatever. So let's get into that. 
Okay, so to do my vegetables, I am not going to use my Michelangelo pans. I'm going to use this, uh, what is this, a red copper pan. I have a uh, love-hate relationship with this pan, and I'm trying to use it more to try to like it, and it's just not always working. So, I am going to use this one mainly because my other Michelangelo um, fry pan skillet that I have, it's just too small. Okay, I need a larger volume to do a bag and a half of vegetables. So we're gonna put that on the burner there. Just got a little bit of butter here. And I cut off about two tablespoons worth. And I'm just gonna plop that into the pan right there. I don't even have the heat on yet because the vegetables are not gonna take very long. So I don't want to turn on the heat just yet. That vegetable is only going to cook up in a matter of a couple of minutes. All right, looks like my, my couscous has come to a boil. So I want to turn this down to just a medium heat. But I'm going to leave it uncovered. Okay, but now what I want to do too is I want to get my vegetables going. So I'm going to put this on a medium high heat, get my butter melted. Now again, yes, this pan does not require that I use butter, supposedly. But I've always said, butter is more than just lubrication, okay? It is flavoring. Now it does say to stir this couscous every once in a while too, so... About every eh, couple of minutes or so, I'll give that a stir kitchen shears here just to cut open the bags now I'm not going to put in this whole bag of broccoli I'm only going to do about half now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of wait for all this little sizzling to stop in the butter here basically that sizzling is just a little bit of water that's trapped in the butter is still trying to come out Okay, so you see all that sizzling is now gone. There's a little bit of foam there on top, but it's not bubbling anymore. And that's what I was waiting for. And I'm just going to add the vegetables. There's that bag. And a little extra broccoli for my daughter. There we go. And then we're just going to let that sit in there and just cook. I do have a little bit of a Mrs. Dash seasoning here. This is everything but the salt. I think it's kind of like an everything bagel type of thing. So it's got onion powders and garlic powders and all that stuff. I'm just going to shake a bit of that into the pot. Stir it in. It's got sesame seeds and poppy seeds. And that will be really good once uh, they get kind of roasted in that uh, butter there. There's that. Let me give my couscous a little stir here. That's looking good. That's really smelling good. I can smell the garlic and everything in that uh, shake that I put on there. That's pretty good. Break open the seasoning pouch and just pour that right in and give that a stir in. That's looking pretty good right there, huh? Okay, so now the couscous just needs to simmer for about another six minutes or so. And... I am going to turn my heat down on my vegetables because these are pretty much already done. But I don't want to kill the heat completely. I want to keep them warm. So yeah, I'm just going to turn them down to about a two. All right, there's still a couple minutes left on my timer. I'm just going to peek in there. Oh, that, that's looking good. That really is. So I am actually going to kill the timer and turn off the oven. There we go. 
I'm going to pull out the ham. <laughs> Give that another little toss. Excellent. I'm going to kill the heat on that. Bring it over here. Okay, I'm going to say that that is. I'm going to say that that's done. Yep. You notice that there's not any liquid really pooling in there. So yep, kill the burner, give it its last toss. And actually I want this to sit for just a couple of minutes and really uh, finish soaking up the last bit of uh, liquid that is in that pan. So I'm just gonna set it there and we'll start dishing up in just a couple of minutes. There you go guys, what a great looking meal. Yeah, let's just dig in, okay? Uh, I never tried that um, Mrs. Dash seasoning before, so that's also new for me tonight. So let's try it and see what's going on. Hmm. A lot more uh, poppy seeds in there than I thought they were gonna be. That's not bad. Okay, let's try this um, big pearl um, couscous. I've never had couscous that was that big before. I mean, that is big. Hmm. The garlic flavor is not overpowering. Got a little bit of a herbiness to it too. I think it's just like parsley, maybe a little bit of oregano. Mm. Mm. That's quite nice. Okay. Let's see about this ham here. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Mmm. God, that was so good. So good. And I'll tell you right now, the big secret on the ham, go easy on the clove. Now, if you got a bigger piece of ham, yeah, you could maybe use a, maybe up to a quarter teaspoon on like a big five or six pound ham. But on a little steak like this, a pinch is all you need. Nice and sweet from the brown sugar. You can taste the applesauce or the apple juice. I do wish they had apple cider. I think that would have been a better choice than just regular apple juice. But it is what I had, so. Mm. This is really good, guys. I know I say it all the time. There have been a few dishes where I haven't because it wasn't as good as I was hoping. This definitely exceeded my expectations. Give it a shot. I also wanted to let you guys know, I do this not to brag, not to boast, but just to show you how easy it is to actually cook a good meal. And basically, when my kids' friends were coming over and saying how their parents don't cook for them, they're eating garbage food all the time from the fast food places, it kind of touched my heart in saying, you know, people need to learn how to do this stuff. And that's really all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to teach you guys how to make a decent meal that's good for you, well-rounded, and not too difficult. All right, well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. And I'll see you guys on the road. Stay tuned next week. We are going to go on a hike. And I think we're finally going to get over to the... Uh, uh, John Muir section 
and we're going to do another loop over there. I promise you. Okay. I promise you. I know last time I said that and we didn't do it because I got the new 360 camera and I wanted to play with it on a local park nearby. So, but this time for sure, we are getting to the John Muir section. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys on the road. Bye.